Hey everybody, uh, Wizards has a MTG Arena Eldraine state of the game video for MTG Arena. So we are going to, uh, I said MTG Arena many times there, but anyway, we're gonna uh, check out this state of the game video and then give it a chat, okay? So I'm gonna go left monitor, we're all gonna go away. And I'm gonna close down um, me and chat while we Take a listen and a watch. Oh, I need to do one thing. I have to go. Okay, I need to do three things. Hold on. Mute that, or else we'll get nasty echoing. And turn on website sound. All right, here we go. Turn on website. Oh, see, sound. there's the echo. Right, here Where we, am I? Over here. Here's what I got to stop. There. Stop that. All right. Now, no more echo. Game manager Megan O'Malley, and we are here with game director Jay Parker, and we're going to be talking about uh, launch of the game and uh, Throne of Eldraine. With what's next on Magic: The Gathering Arena, with our first ever state of the game. That's right. We're pulling the beta label off with this one and fully launching the game alongside uh, Throne of Eldraine in our fall set rotation. Throne of Eldraine will be coming on September 26th. That's next Thursday? Thursday. Yes, Thursday. Next Thursday uh, will be a brand new set, brand new plane, and three brand new mechanics. Adventure, food, and adamant are the key set mechanics for this one. Adventure and food you may have seen if you played in our courtside brawl event earlier. Adamant will be new since none of the brawl decks happen to include that one. Right, and if you want to learn more about these new mechanics, be sure to check out Matt Tapak's videos listed down below. With Aldrin also comes fall set rotation. That's right. Ixalan, Rivals of Ixalan, Dominaria, and uh, Corset 2019 will be rotating out. Of course, you'll still be able to play with those cards in the play queue and in various historic modes, which we'll be launching later on this year. But uh, in the standard queue, you'll be using that new environment, starting with the Guilds of Ravnica forward, and of course, including the new Throne of Eldraine cards. So on September 26th, we got Throne of Eldraine, we got Fall Set Rotation, and that also means the renewal rewards. When you log in, you'll be receiving 10 individual card rewards, as long as some other cool, fun stuff. Right, Jay? That's right. Uh, we've got some additional rewards across the initial part of the set mastery for Eldraine so that you can get some additional packs and additional rewards to help fill in your collection and get all set up for this new meta environment. So in order to be eligible for these renewal rewards, you must have created your account before September 26th. So if you aren't already playing, now is a great time to do so. The other thing this will make you eligible for is our beta rewards. We've got a new avatar and a card back. Initially, we thought we had totally lost them, but it turns out that we did have them around. And so, in case you didn't pick up on my brilliant humor there, it's going to be a Fibblethip avatar and card back for all of our beta players. So like Megan was saying, create your account before the 26th and you'll be eligible for those. And we wanted to, of course, thank all of you players for sticking with us throughout this beta period. Uh, and even though we're launching, we still have a lot more planned. One of the things that we have planned is talking to you guys more about what we have planned. So we want to start talking through an uh, upcoming roadmap for where we see development going with the game. Starting off with the things that we are currently in development on, like, shockingly enough, Throne of Eldraine. But what's coming up after that? Well, we've got a couple of features that we're targeting for our October build. Like? Our friends list. We are getting some of the start of our social features into Arena, starting with friends and the ability to challenge your friends. So that's slated for our October build. And also with your friends, you'll be able to play Constructed Brawl. Right, so you may have checked out Brawl earlier this month with our courtside Brawl event, but now we are bringing Constructed Brawl, which means you get to build your own deck. We had the basics of Brawl working in game for that pre-con event, but there's a little more work we had to do on the deck builder side, let you pick a commander, set up the filtering, things like that that you need uh, to be able to play Brawl well. And so we've got all that ready to go for our October release. Awesome. So we got September covered into October with Friends List and Constructed Brawl. Then what? We want to talk to you about some of the things that we have uh, currently in development. Things that we're talking about around the studio, things that we're getting ready to work on in future milestones. These will be things that you'll probably see coming over the course of uh, the next several months. Things like friend messaging, so you'll be able to exchange messages back and forth with your friends 
or the Mac OS version of the game, which we're currently working on getting all ready to go. All right, and in addition to these MPG Arena features, we're already working on the next two card sets with Theros Beyond Death and Ikoria Lair of Behemoths. We start working on the card sets well in advance of whenever they hit players, usually in advance of when you guys know about them, but now you guys know the full uh, 2020 slate. It's exciting to be able to talk about all the work that we've got going on into Theros, a lot of good stuff happening there, and uh, we are currently working on getting the planning all ready to go for Ikoria so that we know where to send the devs on their uh, missions into the Lair of the Behemoths. What comes after that? There's some things that we're currently uh, concepting around the studio and that we're thinking around a little bit more. Fun things in the future like Cube Draft, the ability to share your friend's decks when you're challenging them. So you can have your friend uh, try out that new brew you built or try out that cool thing that your friend made. Or if you're bringing some friends to Magic the Gathering Arena and they're like, I don't have a deck. Be like, don't worry about it. Here you go. Show them the kind of things that they might like to play and then they can figure out what they want to take home and adopt for themselves. There's a State of the Game article that's coming out alongside this video that should have a lot more details on any of this information. Awesome. So you can keep an eye on our status page for the latest information on maintenance times for this game update. You can follow us at MTG underscore Arena uh, all the time for more information and updates. And be sure to tune in to our early access event on September 24th bright and early at 8 a.m. to watch hundreds of your favorite content producers and streamers get right into the action. Anything else? I think that's it. Thanks okay. for watching, and uh, we'll see you guys in game. And that's usually my line, so I'm just going to sit here. I, I need to get back to work. So you can go. Oh, hey, you're still here. Do you want to play with every card in standard? Do you want to possibly win every card in standard? Well, we've got events for you. The first four days, we're running an event where you can play with any card in standard. And the next weekend, we're running an event where you could win a copy of every card in standard. So, come play. What? I don't even understand what that means exactly, but I'm not sure I care. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know what that last bit meant. Play with every card in standard. Can't you already play with every card in standard? That's kind of weird. Um, I I don't understand that last one. Maybe somebody can explain what KO meant by that. But let's talk about the other stuff. Oh, they're just gonna they're just gonna unlock. They're gonna turn off, they're gonna give everybody temporarily, they're gonna loan everybody every card in standard. Is that what I'm hearing? Okay. That's, okay, that makes some more sense. Um, one of the things I think Wizards has been doing pretty well here is motivating play during the trough times. Um, one of the things, so I, for those of you who don't know, I worked at Wizards of the Coast for about seven years. Five of it was in R&D on Magic Online and about two of it was on the Arena team. And one of the challenges for Wizards is to maintain players' attention and wallets during this time of Magic, where we're all waiting for a new set to come out. They want you to still be engaged, and so there's a lot of challenges in getting people to uh, continue to, to just keep playing at a time when we're on the edge of our seats waiting for a new set. So... Things like the Mastery Pass and uh, being able to grind Mastery Pass in Play Standard 2020 is an example of that. Um, providing uh, uh, w free cards that you can play anything in Standard if you come and play. Basically, all these discounts and incentives and motivations to come play at a time where players tend to be waiting for the next big thing. And so I think they're doing a great job of motivating. This, this is probably the best, their best move. Uh, I think this is the first time Wizards has offered an official area in which you can play effectively the uh, upcoming, you know, playing the upcoming standard. I think that's, uh, that's really clever. That's great. I, I think this queue has been very popular for them. They're combining two things in one. Basically saying we're going to give you a head start on the Eldraine format. And then uh, also, hey, if you're behind on your XP here, uh, come here and, and grind grind XP. So very clever 
Uh, and also, they this was an, a nice update, a uh, little, little game design thing here. The way this queue started, it had uh, one loss and you're done, uh, win once and you get nothing, win twice and you get something pretty good. And that was, uh, it, it, you didn't get anything too often. Like sometimes you would have, uh, there were times under the previous model where I would play for an hour straight, but because I just couldn't string two wins together, I left with no XP. So they had the right idea of creating a queue in which you could grind XP, but the uh, the frankly, the payouts were too steep, which is to say payout, the, the, everything went to the people who did really well and nothing went to the people who didn't. So this is flattening it out a bit and saying, hey, look, you have a foul to give, so you can lose once. And hey, even if you only win once, you still left with something. And I think that's a nice little change and a little, little good game design lesson there. Uh, I talk about how the economy of the engine tends to stay the same in these decisions. Like they can, they can, but you know, do you want to, uh, do you want to give your players a hundred every 10 times, or do you just want to give them 10 every time? You know, in, in general, if you give players 10 every time, they're gonna feel like they're getting more out of a system than if every 10 times they finally get the 100, you know? So I just thought I'd mention that as a, as a nice little tweak to this and to note Wizards' efforts to get us to play ahead of a new set rotation. It's a, it's a big challenge for digital magic that uh, we worked on for Magic Online and now obviously Arena is working on as well. But let's talk about some of the stuff they mentioned in that video. I have my notes here, what to talk about. We have a uh, friends list. So I said uh, people have been asking what I thought was coming next for Arena, and I was pretty sure social features would be among them. Uh, one of the things that you learn in uh, in games as content, ga uh, you know, games as services like Arena, basically a game as a service is something where you're creating ongoing content and looking to keep people buying updated content from you. Uh, one of the things that's very important for keeping the ecosystem healthy, strong, thriving is uh, good social. Because what happens is uh, if there's not good social, the magic hungry person gets deep into arena and loves it, but they don't reach out to their friend necessarily who's a little less enfranchised and say, hey, you should come play arena because uh, they're just new at magic. It's a little, eh, whatever. But as soon as you have social features and you get to say, hey, I'm going to invite you to come play magic with, uh, I'm assuming they're going to have tools to like reach out to your friends and they'll probably have, uh, I expect we'll see maybe not right off the bat, but long-term expect to have like recruitment bonuses. Like if you can get new players to come in on the system, wizards will probably give you some in-game rewards for that. But basically once you get the tools to, uh, easily interact and challenge friends. Right now there's this friend challenge that's not easy. Like if you come here, like you can do this thing and do a direct challenge and find it, you know, this is all, it kind of does it, but it's not really what we want. What we want is a list of our friends that we can interact with and challenge and, and talk to and stuff. So not a surprise at all that uh, social stuff is coming. Um, and I'm excited to see that it's not, the top of my personal priority list, but I totally understand that it's what the game needs to uh, increase its install base, increase the user base and keep it going healthy and strong. So that'll be good. The next thing they announced was Constructed Brawl. One thing they did not mention with Constructed Brawl is whether it would be standard only, historic only, or both. The fact that they didn't say it makes me think it's going to be standard only since they seem to be trying to push that, but also, Brawl is a commander variant, and the point of commander variants is to provide access to a really broad range of cards. So I think it's a mistake if they make it standard only, even though I know Brawl, like Brawl is inherently standard. I get that. Like the, the, the that uh, Brawl as a format was designed to be standard because the idea of it was it was a way for players who maybe drafted a little bit. Imagine you're a new magic player and you come in and your friend convinces you to learn to draft or you do some sealed or whatever, and you get some cards from the latest sets. The idea of Brawl was that uh, players in that spot would have the tools to create a Brawl deck and have, a, have, a, have an initial commander deck. But I do think that for the online environment, they really need to look at making Brawl historic or or adding historic brawl because I might play some brawl and that'll be okay but the idea of historic brawl actually gets me excited I, so I'm much more excited about the idea of historic brawl than uh, uh, 
than just standard. Yeah, it's standard commander. I get it. I just think I think it's a. Uh, I, I'm not going to call it a mistake because there's a lot of moving pieces and a lot of moving parts for wizards when they make these decisions. But I will say on a personal level, I would enjoy uh, I would enjoy it a lot more if we uh, if we had access to historic brawl. So that's a suggestion for wizards. I get that it's a standard thing, and I get that you're trying to push standard, but anything commander related just makes me want to start adding older cards in. So that maybe that's just me. Uh, East asks if I think there's going to be in-game chat. I don't know if there's going to be in-game chat. They didn't say anything about it. Maybe between friends. You know, we've seen that where emotes, you, you have emotes for non-friends, and then with friends you can actually chat. We'll see. Uh, I tend not to expect extras in the features they mentioned because there's, there's so much for them to do that they're probably uh, making tough choices about what not to do on that type of front uh yeah they said friend messaging was on the horizon but friend messaging is different from in-game chat yeah the, obviously you're gonna be able to chat with friends uh i think i just don't know if they're gonna let you do it in game but if they do create an in-game chat uh in client chat of any kind i don't see why they wouldn't make it available in game as well unless it's a really tough ui issue uh we'll see and then let's see, uh, messaging, yes, yeah, so we talked about that. Mac OS, congratulations, Mac users, your uh, long, long wait. And I say long, long wait, not because of uh, the whatever, two years of Arena or whatever. I'm talking about the long, long wait uh, since 2001 of waiting for the flagship digital product of Magic to be available native to Mac OS. So I know lots of people in my life who I will be letting know that uh, Magic Arena is coming to the Mac. Uh, I don't know what it's gonna do for their numbers, but man, I know some people who are gonna be super happy about that. Um, Epic Game Store, looks like they're trying to broaden their install base by letting uh, Epic have some of their profits. That's always the big thing about uh, Steam and, and game platforms like that. So for the, I don't know, for those of you who don't know, but like Steam, Steam takes about 30% uh, of the price of a game. And so a lot of, uh, a lot of people are, are hesitant to want to give up 30% of their profit to, or 30% of their uh, gross even to, to, uh, to Steam. But when you do and you realize what Steam gives you access to, it becomes totally worth it. So it's possible that I don't know what the deal, you know, we don't know what the what the rate is on um, this whole Epic thing. Like, if they're going to Epic Game Store and not Steam, I'm wondering if Magic is getting a better deal from Epic than the 30% that, uh, that Steam usually wants. Uh, so that's interesting. Yeah, so, the, like, Real is saying Steam has a one-of-a-kind infrastructure, and that's why I'm saying it's interesting that they're not going with Steam. I'm wondering what they're getting out of it by going with Epic instead of Steam, and I assume it's money, I, <laughs> right? That they did some calculus and feel like Epic is taking less of a cut that's worth uh, worth more. Yeah, so Epic is just charging less. So there's that. Uh, new events. They didn't get into too much detail about new events except for that last thing, but I want to uh, talk about the Cube Draft. Uh, they did mention that Cube is coming, and uh, that's really exciting. And some someone was asking me if they thought that, like, eventually they could make a cube on Arena. I said, heck, you can make a cube on Arena right now. I mean, the thing with cubes is you don't... They don't need to be vintage power level, right? Like they're just, it's just a curated collection of cards that you use to draft and to play limited with, right? And so you can do that with, with any set of cards. Certainly there's enough content on Arena already to make a viable, fun cube. And as they add cards, it will only get better and better. I'm a little bit jelly. If I were still at Wizards, I would hope that I could be involved in the uh, creation of a, an Arena cube. It'd be a fun task. Uh, so that's really exciting. Look, you know, boy, once we get cubing on Arena, I might take voting off. <laughs> voting is off the table. Go away. We're, no voting. Or people who vote for cube uh, get uh, 3x in their votes. Anyway. 
Hey, uh, Ruby, uh, I'm gonna say, uh, thanks. Thanks. Since, uh, Ruby doesn't have, uh, sound, I'll wave. Arena Masters, yeah. Uh, let's see. One hundred and twenty from mythical. I don't know what you mean by from mythical, but I'll worry about that later. Don't worry about it. Uh, let's see. So what? Else? Oh, they also mentioned uh, friend deck sharing. That's another interesting way to. Again, you're trying to get people over the wall. Magic is an incredibly sticky game once you get people over that wall, but the initial wall is high. So how do you get people over that wall? Well, one way they're going with is the friend deck sharing, which I assume just means loaning a deck digitally so that you show up and uh, I can say, here, I'm gonna loan you this deck. I don't know how they're gonna cap it. Obviously, if, if it were unbounded and you could just loan decks I also don't know if they're going to take it out of your stuff. Like, let's say I have four copies of Gideon and I uh, build a deck with it and then I loan it to you. What I'm not sure of is whether I can still play that deck while you also play that deck. If that's the case, if I can play it while you play it, then, they, then there's no way they can leave it unbounded or else you could just have two players uh, playing anything they wanted from one account. Uh, what it could mean, though, is that while you have your deck loaned out to your friend, you are not allowed to use those cards. Um, or maybe, oh, you just share a deck list? Hmm. Maybe it's, okay, that's fine. I, I really think, I don't think it's just a deck list. Maybe I need to watch that again, but I'll say this, Wizards, if it is just sharing deck lists, that's not doing what you want, which is why I assume that's not what it is. Sharing a deck list does not get somebody over a wall. Giving someone a deck that they play with and love, and then you take back, does get people over the wall, because then they have a reason, they have something they're trying to get to from the on the other side. But that makes sense. That's a great uh, middle ground. Eugene says that the that what it means is that you'll only be able to play the shared deck with a friend. That's great. That is absolutely great. That is totally... Uh, anybody play a ton of Constructed and have friends who don't play a ton of Constructed, and when you go visit them, you uh, bring several decks, and then you pop out and say, do you want to play? Here, you pick one deck, and I'll take one of mine, and then we play my decks. Uh, that is uh, something that people do in paper that helps people get over that wall, and so it totally makes sense to do it uh, digitally, and I, I like that feature. Uh, basically, you just want to give, uh, I, I hate to say it, but it's like the, the the first one's free, right? Like they're just looking for different ways to say, hey, the first, uh, your first one's free. And then they hope that you fall in love with it and start paying for the rest of it. So anyway, uh, good changes coming, but now let's get to the invisible elephant in the room. You know what they did not say? You know what they didn't mention at all that really bugs me? Unfortunately, it looks like Luis is right. Luis on LR said that he didn't think that they were going to do human drafting anytime soon. I was in the building and we were talking about doing human drafting soon, so I thought he was going to be wrong. But it seems like uh, since I have left Wizards, they have really done a philosophy shift on the priority of having eight humans drafting on arena and it makes me super sad i kind of feel like dr frankenstein a little bit because i did work on the uh, initial bot stuff so I, they've changed it a lot since i left of course but in many ways i feel like i'm the father of the arena bots and but i made this child for a completely different purpose the the point of arena bots as i was designing them was to have a place where People unfamiliar with drafting who could not handle the stress of a pick clock, which is a real stress in draft, would have a place to play and learn how to play limited in a way that was uh, was authentic but and fun, but maybe a little not quite as good as human drafting, but you know, it solves the problem of having no clock on the pick, which was the main thing. And so as I designed it, my whole thinking was that we were totally gonna have eight human drafting for the uh, expert level players. 
And then the kind of the kiddie pool of draft was going to involve these bots that I was working on. And so I made kiddie pool level bots. Like they're, they're, you know, people complain about the bots. Well, it's like, yeah, but we didn't, we, we put kiddie pool level effort into it because of what I thought of what we said at the time was going to be the, the purpose of those bots. And now they're just shouldering the entire burden of all drafting on arena. And as fun as we're having as as much fun as we're having every day, it's a big disappointment to me that it does not seem to be on the Wizards roadmap and they don't seem to care. And so Wizards, if any of you are listening, a lot of good stuff was announced there, but you are not authentic until you have eight humans drafting on Arena, all right? You do not have authentic drafting. And I say this as someone who built these bots with pride and is is really happy in a lot of ways with where they ended up, but you're letting us down. And I practically want to lead a... a limited walk off at uh, on arena at this point and say you know let's quit the system and stop playing for a week and let them know that we really want we really want human drafting drafting is the difference maker for magic no other game in the market no other game competing with magic the gathering in this space whether it's hearthstone eternal uh the previous tabletop uh competitors any of the new stuff on the horizon None of them produce the level of firehose content that uh, Wizards of the Coast does. And part of the firehose content is limited. Like the reason they make five times as many cards as the next biggest uh, uh, digital card game or whatever is because of limited. So much of the work that goes into a magic set is all about making the limited compelling, the sealed compelling, the drafting compelling. And it just breaks my heart that Wizards is saying loud and clear that on the most successful digital product that they have launched ever, Magic Online is pretty successful, but Arena is crushing it, that they have no interest in offering us draft junkies what we really want, which is the ability to draft against seven other human beings. I pod In pod, out of pod, I can live with or live without, but I am stunned that Wizards has not made it a priority, and I am unfortunately not as stunned as uh, <laughs> as you'd think about the fact that they are just not mentioning it at all. And what I would love to at least hear from Wizards is an acknowledgement that a bunch of us are out here waving our hands and saying, hey, this matters a lot to us, and you are not even speaking to it. Can you please at least speak to it, at least be honest with us and say, uh, it's just not, we don't think it's important, or tell us why. Because we're telling you why we think it's important. And you are not even acknowledging it. And if you're going to tell us it's not important, I want to hear it out of your mouth, Chris K.O. I want to hear it out of your mouth, Jay Parker. You tell me why this is not important enough for uh, for your audience. I think it's a mistake. I think uh, maybe, maybe they just don't want to kill Magic Online. <laughs> maybe they think that if they add human drafting that it kills Magic. I don't know. But... Uh, really frustrates me and i uh i want i'm hoping somebody there hears it we want human drafting and if you're not going to give it to us at least talk about it please thank you everything else looks pretty good on this wizards but i'm not letting you get away without it uh without mentioning mentioning that so thanks Are they, they, are they? I didn't read the article, I just watched the video. Can you, can someone point me? Cause I, I don't wanna make a useless rant. If they've actually listened, then I wanna flip the script and say, thank you wizards, thank you for listening. Okay, but they didn't, did they say that in the video? Or did they say that in text? All right. I have not read the article, so apparently I missed a, a bit of information, but it's still, I think my rant still stands. I think my rant still stands because all they've done is say, they've said that it's in the crazy bucket and it should not be in the crazy bucket. 
<laughs> okay, so uh, I've been corrected by chat a little bit that Wizards has not said nothing. They have acknowledged pod drafting and it's in their crazy bucket. It's not crazy, Wizards. Get it in, get it out of that bucket, please. Please put it in the, we know this is important and are gonna work on it as soon as we can bucket and get it out of the crazy bucket, all right? Other than that, I think the rant stands. Rant stands. Thank you for listening.